Our God and our Father delight is that it will be well with our soul. And we're asking that today as you speak to us and bring us nearer unto yourself by speaking your word to us, you'll get us to the position where it becomes well to our souls in Jesus' name. Teach us by your spirit today. In Jesus' name we pray. In Micah chapter 6, I want to read to you from verse 8, the text from which we are taking a message today. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Walk humbly with thy God. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due season. It's necessary that when we come to the church, we remind ourselves of the deep cardinal teachings of the Word of God. Many times the important parts of the Word of God and not just uh, the straight outlined doctrines of the Bible like salvation, repentance, water baptism, and sanctification. And, you know, some of these other cardinal doctrines we teach from the Word of God. Sometimes some of the things uh, like what we're talking about today are some of the things that those who profess to be Christians miss out from their Christian lives and they go astray, they become useless, or they become cast away before the Lord. And so it's important as we listen to this word today that you just uh, think of yourself. And you know sometimes I've discovered in a personal way that sometimes I have to listen to something once or twice or three times or four times to even be able to get the nudges out of the truth that the Lord is teaching me. And you members of the choir that are here, and uh, some sooner leaders, socials, coordinator, everybody, you've heard it once, perhaps, and then, oh, you feel I had it at the first service. But you know what? Sometimes you just don't understand the meaning when you hear the first time. And such a message like this that is so important, you know, if it were possible for you to hear nine times, ten times the same verse, the same teaching on the power of a humble life, that will be very necessary and very important. And um, those of us who are here at the first uh, service, please pay attention. Because you miss this out in your life and God will keep a far distance away from you. You get this in your life and... There is no limit to what you can do for the Lord, how much or how high the Lord will take you. If you take the word of God to heart, that says, be clothed with humility. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due season. The word of God is spiritual and it touches our thoughts, our intents, our emotions, our words and our actions. And it is only when we come to Christ in repentance and faith, turning away from all our evil, all our iniquity, that you know actually the Lord himself, he works in our lives. And then he changes us. And it's only then we can begin to have a taste of what the prophet Micah was talking about when he said, you do righteously or justly. You love mercy and you walk humbly with your God. After we are born again, the Holy Ghost daily aids us to please the Lord. What is the nature of humility? We talk about walking humbly with thy God. We talk about being close with humility. What just does it mean? Well, we know what it doesn't mean. Humility is opposed to boasting or bragging. 
Humility is supposed to glory in your own attainment. And after we are put on the whole armor of God and we are serving the Lord, there is something we mustn't forget as part of the armor. In fact, it covers every other part of the armor. Be clothed with humility. Put on humility. Over all to cover yourself. When you are close with humility, humility like that, God changes your personality. And then you enter into a great privilege that you will not know until you start to walk in humility. And then your prayers will even be affected. And then there is promotion for the humble. Listen to me as I share with you from the Bible. Number one, the personality of the humble. The privilege of the humble. The prayers of the humble and promotion for the humble. What's the personality? What's the thing that actually marks out a person that is humble? How can we trace the, the personality traits of the humble in the scriptures? Now we see this uh, personality in the lives of the people that went before us. We've, uh, we've seen uh, people like Abraham, like Moses, like Saul, when he was first anointed. We've seen people like David, like Solomon, like Isaac, like Jeremiah, like, uh, you know, Jesus Christ himself, like Paul the Apostle, and a number of people in the Bible. And from the things they did, you can trace the personality traits of the humble. And the Lord is telling us, giving us all these pictures, that what he desires of us to be, what he wants us to be, is that we'll be like these people. He has given us their pictures in the Bible. Let's see this, these pictures and trace the personality of the humble. And as you endeavor to obey the Lord walking humbly with your God, you'll be able to see what is it exactly the Lord is requiring from you. In Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Verse 27. Here Abraham, who had been called of the Lord, who had responded to the Lord, here he gives them um, out his personality in the way he prayed. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which I am but dust and ashes. You know the best that Abraham needed to, uh, wanted to say about himself while he was talking with God? Looking at the great privilege he had, looking at the chance and the possibility of prayers in his life, and looking at the great promotion the Lord had given him. Yet while talking with the Lord, he said, Oh Lord, I don't judge myself to be more than dust and ashes. Now you know in those days, uh, dead people were buried in two ways. Or they, were getting, they were taken care of two ways. One, either they were buried and they became dust, or they were burnt and, and they became ashes. And then uh, Abraham was saying, I do not count myself to be any greater than what will become after we are dead, after either dust or ashes. And yet, oh Lord, what a great privilege I am talking to you. And you know, it's a paradox of the Christian life, of the Christian faith. The lower you go, the higher God brings you. The more humble you express yourself, the more highly the Lord will exalt you. And the more you are able to say, oh Lord, I know if, if, if it were not your grace, I'll be nothing. The more the Lord will draw nearer unto you because he gives grace and more grace and more grace to those who are humble and be, they become humble more and more as they journey on. Walk humbly with thy God. In um, Exodus chapter 3, we're looking at verse 11. Moses said unto God, who am I? That's the personality, that's the language, that's the meditation, that's the thought, and that's the word, that's the action of a man that is humble. Who am I? Hey, you know the people that are always thinking on how rich they are, how wealthy they are, how great they are, how far above all the other people in the world they are. They do not have a humble personality. The people that are always spending the time to think about who they are in comparison with other people. How highly exalted they are above other people. You know they do not have the personality of the humble. But you know it's the person that says, Oh Lord, why it not for your grace? Why it not for your hand in my life? Why it not for the fact that you called me and you are using me? I'll be nothing, completely nothing. And Moses manifesting this personality trait of the humble said, 
who am I that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Now you come to a man called Saul. At the time he was first chosen, when he was called by the Lord to become king. You know how he reacted in a humble way in First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 17. Samuel now reminding him of what he was before um, this time he said, when thou was little in thine own sight, you see the personality of a, of a humble person, little in thy own sight, you know the people that are always singing their praises, blowing their trumpet, measuring their height, telling other people how small they are, but how great they personally are, you know they are not humble, the personality of the humble, the personality is the, of the person that is humble is the one that is all the time putting himself in the right side. Thou was little in thine own sight, and there was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee to be king over Israel. And as we look at this uh, young man, David, in Second Samuel, chapter 7, verses 18 and 19, he wanted to build a house for the Lord. But the Lord said, no, David, you won't do it. Your son will do it. And then the Lord gave him some promises. And he entered into a greater covenant benefit with the Lord. Now look at the response of David. Well, he didn't say, oh, yes, I merit all that. That's my right. God ought to build a house for me. God ought to make my son to live forever and reign forever. You know, that was not his personality. You know, the personality of David, the personality of the humble. In Second Samuel chapter 7, verses 18 and 19, Then went King David in and sat before the Lord. And he said, Who am I? You remember who said that before? Moses. Great, great man. Moses, that led a whole nation out of captivity into the land of liberty. He said, who am I? And here again we have the king, David. Have you read your Bible and noticed how many times Bible writers mention the name of David? Right from the um, first Samuel, you have uh, the name of David over and over and over. Almost every page you turn in the Old Testament, in the uh, time of the kings and the psalms and the, and the prophets, uh, you have David, David all the time. God exalted that man. You come to the New Testament, to, uh, to Matthew, immediately at the beginning, the first chapter of, uh, of uh, the New Testament, what do you have? David. And as you go into the Acts of the Apostles, you'll find the Apostles mentioning his name over and over and over. Come into the Epistles, again you have the mention of David until the end of the Bible. That David was so important in the sight of the Lord, and yet, you know his personality, the personality of the humble. And again David said, Who am I? O Lord God, and what is my house? That thou hast brought me hitherto. You know what uh, you'll discover? You'll discover if a man is really humble, if he will influence his family, his household to be humble. And you know, Zona leader, if you're humble, your wife will be humble, your children will be humble. If you are proud, they'll take after you. You know what? Uh, you know, all the people in, uh, in the Christian fold. If you are watching them very well, like the husband, like the wife. If the wife is, is uh, proud, you can trace it back to the husband. If the husband is proud, if the wife has not started to be proud, you'll see it in the wife eventually. You know, that is always how it is. But you know, David said, who is me? Who am I? And who is, what is my house? That we should do this unto us. The personality of the humble affects everybody around him. And you find this in the life of Solomon when he came to reign as king. Now the Lord is saying unto this, will I look, the people that tremble at my word, the people that are humble in my sight. And you know, if you are really going to please the Lord, you will walk humbly before him. Humbly before him. As um, 
a worker in the church, house fellowship leader, IFL house fellowship leader, coordinator, everybody, even general superintendent, you know, I cannot continue to have the grace of God in my life except I keep humble and I maintain the personality of, of humility. And my wife does the same and my children do the same. You know, if a man is used of God and he becomes proud and pompous and he brags and he boasts, is on his way out of the kingdom of God and out of usefulness. So my brother, my sister, the Lord is saying that we must walk humbly in his presence. Walk humbly in his sight. And in Second Samuel chapter 7 that I'm reading to you, in verse 19, This was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God, but thou, thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner of man, O Lord God? In First Kings chapter 3. Let's look at Solomon at the beginning of his uh, reign. In First Kings chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 7. And now, O Lord my God, Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or how to come in. Now do you find um, leaders in the world, kings in the world, presidents in the world, accepting that openly? Oh no. Do they accept ignorance? Do they accept, I know not how to go out or how to come in? Oh no. Do you know what is happening? The world is coming into the church. And in the church today, you don't find the pastors accepting their ignorance, accepting their littleness, accepting that they know nothing, except by the grace of God. You know, you find the pastors that will brag and, bo and boast and say, you know, how great he is, even without God, even without Christ. How he was born in a royal family. How he sacrificed a lot before even accepting Christian service. And uh, you know God is so lucky that he has this uh, pastor as a preacher. God will not be able to use them. But you know Solomon said, Lord, I'm but a little child. I am but a little child. A king? Oh yes, all the same a little child. And I know not how to go out or how to come in. You know, it's always uh, my concern that in this church as we Christian people, believers and preachers, every one of us, as we see examples of uh, other pastors and preachers outside uh, that have allowed the spirit of the world to get into them, of pride, of arrogance, of not living a humble life and maintaining a humble personality before the Lord. It's my concern, like a father's concern over children, that you will know that you are born again and that the Lord is calling you, everyone, choir, ushers, everybody, that God has called every one of us to a life of humility. And you know, I watch over myself, I watch over members of my family, and I watch over the people that are near and I tell them the sin that will make you to be rejected by the Lord is that if you are proud, proud of anything, of your attainment. But you know, if you keep humble before the Lord, humble before the Lord, every one of us, the Lord will use us and continue to use us in a mighty way. But you know, there are preachers out there, out there. And they brag, if you see their example, run away from them. And make sure that you don't copy them. Because all the people that are going to be used of God, and you want to continue to be used of God, you will maintain a personality of humility. I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or how to come in. Now come to Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 5. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 5. Then said I, this is Isaiah talking, a prophet not only of a single church, a prophet to the whole nation. Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lace, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lace, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You know those prophets of old, they maintained an attitude, a personality of humility. 
We're not only talking about uh, dressing. We're not only talking about what you put on. I mean, your whole personality, your thoughts about yourself, your meditation about yourself, your actions uh, towards other people, your whole attitude and your whole approach and relationship, that's what we're talking about. And the very heart that you have. You know, your, the way you feel towards God, what God can look at, and will see that you actually entirely maintain that personality of humility. In, Je in um, Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Now what would you have felt if you had a revelation of the Lord? And it tells you that. You know, we have uh, young people who have some little, little dreams. They're going to be used of God. Maybe that is true. But then they become so proud, so arrogant, and they lose the opportunity God wanted to give them. But you know, when Jeremiah heard this, and the Lord said, Before I even formed thee, before you were ever born, I knew you. I could look ahead, and I could see that you fit into a person I would like to ordain as a prophet unto the nation. You know what Jeremiah said? In verse 6, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Is that your attitude? Is that your personality? Coming on to the New Testament, in John chapter 13, John chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God he, and went to God, he rises from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. That's the work of a servant. But Jesus Christ, our Lord, revealed the personality of humility all through his life. Until the time he was about to go to the cross, he took a towel, and then he bought a bowl of water, and he washed his disciples' feet. It was too much for Peter, and he said, Oh Lord, you will not do that for me. Jesus said, If I do it not for you, you will not have any part in me. And eventually he did it for everybody. And then in verse 13, ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say well, for so I am, if I then. Zona leader, coordinator, members of the choir, you know, they don't talk like this in other churches, but this is a place where we're getting you ready for heaven. Jesus said, if I then, your Lord and Master, is he your Lord? Look at the example. And your Master, is he your Master? Look at the example. Don't forget the Bible. You are born again so that you can walk humbly with your God. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye ought to wash one another's feet, for I have given you an example. That ye should do as I have done unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Now, what are we Christians sometimes uh, trying to do? Sometimes, you know, we distinguish ourselves, we separate ourselves from the general body of the believers. You know, we want to be treated uh, apart, uh, separately. We want to have, uh, you know, a position and an attitude that is above, far above the congregation. And yet the Lord is saying, what are you doing? Haven't you seen me, your Lord and your Master? What I have done? And ye ought to do the same because I've given you an example that you should do as I've done unto you. Are you trying to be greater than the Lord Jesus Christ? The servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him, if ye know these things. Happy are ye if you do them. You know, if we are not humble, we'll never be really fully happy, joyful. The joy of the Lord will be far away from us if we are not obeying the Lord in this area. 
of walking humbly with our God. In First Corinthians, I'm reading chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm reading verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles. Paul, we think you are the greatest. Oh yes. The rest of the church knew that this man was the greatest. All the theologians since that generation, we all know that this man was the greatest. And even God has given him a ministry that made him the greatest of all the apostles. But you know the personality of the humble? He'll never repeat that same thing, even though it is true. In his heart, this is the way he feels. This is his thought, his meditation, his word, his conversation, his action. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet, I am not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly, more than them, more than them all. Yet not I, yet not I. But the grace of God which was given me, which was with me. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints. Paul, you mean it? Are you just deceiving also? Know that's how I feel. You know it's good to know the Lord. Because when you are really great, you don't know you are great. You are not singing your praises. You are not uh, commanding everybody to recognize the fact that you are great. But even openly you will write it down for generations after to see how you think about yourself. I am less than the least of all saints. Not just of all apostles, not of all prophets and evangelists, but even of members of the church. And yet this grace is given me that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Well, then we have understood what's the personality of a humble person. He never sings his praise. He never shouts his praise. He never blows his trumpet. And he's, uh, you know, always looking for the bad seed because he never wants to project himself. No, he never wants to do that. Humility ought to show itself in every action of our lives. Humility must be in the heart, and then it will come out spontaneously as the outflow of life in every act that a man performs. Now, when ought, a, when ought a man to be humble? A man shall walk humbly with the Lord at all times. When his gifts are strong and vigorous, he should be humble. You know, like Gideon that said, I'm just uh, from a poor family. When the angel said, Go in this thy might. He said, No, I have no might. I'm, the, I'm a poor person from a poor family. So when your gifts are strong and vigorous, work humbly. When you have a great deal of work and responsibility to do, what are we to do? Work humbly. Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, verse 10, After you have done all these things, you just say, We are unprofitable servants. So then, when your responsibilities are great and your works are great, remember, work humbly with thy God. When men praise and admire you, what are you to do? You work humbly with the Lord. In Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar told him, but then he had forgotten the dream, and he didn't know the interpretation, and he was afraid of what uh, will come out of it. And so he got all the people around him together to help him. But he couldn't help. And he decided or threatened he was going to kill them, destroy them. But you know, eventually Daniel uh, told uh, Ariok and said, Why is uh, the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok uh, made, the, uh, made the thing known unto Daniel. And Daniel said, Don't worry about that. I'll ask the Lord. And then eventually he went in the night and he asked the Lord. And the Lord gave him a night vision. And now he had seen this revelation that nobody in the whole nation could see. Obviously this man had talents and gifts and revelation. Obviously Nebuchadnezzar will admire this man and praise this man. But you know what Daniel said in Daniel chapter 2 verse 30. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom 
that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that, that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thine heart. Daniel said, Oh no, I'm not a great person. I'm just a humble fellow. And my personality is that even when you're admiring me and you're praising me, I still want to tell you there is nothing in me greater than in any other person. God is just using me, choosing me to be an instrument. That's a humble fellow. And you see, when others envy you and compete with you, what are you to do? Are you to say, I'll prove to them? No, that will be pride, my brother, my sister, members of the choir. I'll prove that I can do that thing better than that other fellow. No, that will be pride. What's the personality of a humble person? Even when others envy you, when others compete with you, walk humbly with thy God. Then when the temptation is there to seek big places, what are you to do? Walk humbly with thy God in Jeremiah chapter 45. Jeremiah chapter 45, verse 5. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. So when the temptation is there, to seek a big place for yourself, seek them not. Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, reading from verse 7, all through to verse 11, that when you are brought or when you are invited to a feast, do not seek the chief or the highest room. But when thou art bidding of any man to a wedding, in verse 8, sit not in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidding of him. In verse 10, but when thou art bidding, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship or praise, legitimate praise, in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself, himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And when you are under great trials, you are again to walk humbly with your God. When your brethren think that you are wrong, you are to walk humbly with your God. And when you have received miracles and mercies from the Lord, you have to remember to walk humbly with thy God. In um, Genesis chapter 32, verse 10, here is Jacob responding to the miracles of supply, the miracles of mercy that the Lord had given him. And again, it shows us the humility of this man. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth, which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Now you have seen from the Bible, from the Word of God, that it's important that we keep not just an outward form of humility, not just an outward appearance of humility, but a personality that goes through into our thoughts, into our imaginations, into our meditations, into our words, into our conversation, into our actions. A personality of humility. Read really about Spurgeon. Now Spurgeon was a preacher of the last century, of about uh, more than 100 years ago. But you know Spurgeon became a well-known preacher even from the age of about 20. Because uh, from the age of about 20, he was preaching to large crowds of people before he ever got married. And uh, he maintained such a dynamic uh, ministry of evangelizing with thousands of people. In about a message he preached, I think, in 1876, he was talking to the congregation and he said, Now we thank the Lord here that uh, you are uh, up to 5,600 members in the congregation. And you know, those years, more than a hundred years ago, a preacher talking like that, having such a large congregation within the church, that was very, very large. And yet, you know, he maintained a personality of humility. Somebody said to him, you must stand up for your dignity. Spurgeon replied, I lost my dignity a long time ago. And I never thought it worthwhile to look for it again. 
And then he also said, if you have no dignity of character, any other dignity is a piece of rag. And that uh, man Spurgeon was mightily used of God. He wrote so many books. He wrote, uh, in fact, uh, you know, so many sermons he wrote now. And you just uh, many times to go to the bookshop that uh, stock his books and you book upon book. He wrote about the, uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, parts of every part of the Bible. Daily reading, devotional reading, and book of the Psalms, everything. And yet, that was a humble man. You know, if those who walk with the Lord in the ages past, generations past, if they were humble, we too were to maintain the same walk with the Lord. Now, the privilege of the humble. You've seen the personality. What's the privilege? In Micah chapter 6 and in verse 8. Micah chapter 6 verse 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. The privilege you have when you are humble is you'll be able to walk with the Lord. Walk with the Lord. In James chapter 4, reading from verse 6, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Not his age. He will give grace. That's a great privilege we have. In verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. That's the privilege we miss when we are not humble. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28. And the best things of the world, and the things which are despised, as God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. The privilege we have is that the more humble we become, the more he's able to use us, the more he's able to use our lives and ministries and messages to confound the mighty. Matthew chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 2 to verse 4. And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, have a change of mind, a change of attitude, a change of character, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Heaven, what a great privilege. Now the prayers of the humble. In Psalm 9, verse 12. Psalm 9, verse 12. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. You know some ministers of the gospel, I mean many of these evangelists outside, they feel that their ministries will grow when they come proud. They feel that a God will make them known when they are deliberately proud. But you know it says, He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. You know the lower you go, as I've told you, the higher the Lord will bring you. The greater, uh, the greater the effectiveness of your prayers will be. And then in um, Psalm 10, verse 17, Lord, thou hast set the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. When you are humble, he makes himself to hear your prayers. And your desires are known to him. When you are humble, in Psalm 138 and verse 6, Psalm 138, and verse 6, Though the Lord be high, yet he hath respect unto the lowly, but the proud in knoweth are far off. In Psalm 66 and verse 2, For all those things as my hand made, and all those things have been, says the Lord, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, 
and trembleth at my word. You know, the Lord has no place in his heart or in his kingdom. But those who just uh, toss the word of God aside, and they say, well, even though the Bible talks about humility, I'm not going to accept all that. I want to be a lanky fellow. I want to be a person that is, you know, uh, really bold. And I'm going to blow my trumpet. If I don't blow my trumpet, it will get rust. But you know, God has no chance. Uh, he has no place for such people in his kingdom. But for those who will hear the word of God and tremble at the word of God. The men and the women and everybody. And you know, from the example of Jesus, if anybody ought to be humble, the higher we go in Christian service, I believe with all my heart, the more humble we ought to be. Because, you know, as a young convert, we actually don't understand about humility very well. You know, we, all, we just uh, think we are humble if we are walking step by step and looking down and uh, we bob our head, our, our ear, and it goes down a little and then we don't use chain or we don't use all this jewelry and we dress in a moderate way and we're going gently and gently. The new convert thinks that that is humility. But you know, the more you read the Bible, the more you know God, the more you serve God, and the more you are exposed to opportunities of preaching the gospel and knowing the Lord, and you get into greater areas of usefulness. If you are really a real child of God, if you are really in fellowship with the Lord, the more you go in Christian service, the more humble it takes you. And the more you know the Lord, the more you know yourself that you are nothing without the grace of God. But you know, you find some people that are humble just in the first two years of their Christian service or Christian life. And then after that, four years after that, five years after that, or ten years after that, they become so proud. You know, the Lord has no place for such people. But my brothers, my sisters, let's take the word of God and walk humbly before the Lord. Waste your God. And then will your prayers be important in His sight. Now, promotion for the humble. In Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 8 all through to verse 11. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause. We do as great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the field to set up on high those that below and that those that mourn may be exalted to safety eventually and finally there is promotion for the humble you promote yourself and the lord brings you down but you are lowly and you are gentle and you are humble and you bring down yourself and the lord brings you up that's his method that's the principle of his kingdom and uh, that is his principle of the qualification he's looking for in the people he uses the most. In uh, Proverbs, I'm reading chapter, chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. And then in Matthew chapter 23, Matthew chapter 23, we're looking at verse 12. Here are the words of Jesus Christ himself, Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. You know, from all that we have studied, the Lord is going to give the power, the privilege, the promotion to the people that are humble. To the people that know that without the Lord, they themselves are nothing. But what will God do for the proud? Well, you see, you see he has said, I will resist the proud. One of the people that were proud in the Bible, Nebuchadnezzar, well, he, had, he was a king, he had a kingdom, he was an emperor, he had an empire, and he had many servants under him, and he had great authority. 
But you know, even when a man has that, he should still understand all these things came just by the provision of the Lord. But he didn't realize that. And we're told in Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. From verse 28. Daniel chapter 4. From verse 28. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, they walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? You see that? That's different from what I've been reading to you about Abraham, about Moses, about David, about Solomon, about, about uh, Jeremiah, about Isaiah, about Paul, about Jesus Christ himself. This is so different. He looked at the work he has done. And from the thoughts of his heart, meditation of his heart, imagination of his heart, all to the words and the action and the attitude of his life, he said, this is Babylon. Great Babylon that are built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, thy kingdom is departed from thee. You see the judgment for the proud? And it shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know the, that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth thee to whomsoever he will. Not to the proud, to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the same fulfilled on Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till the ears of it, till his ears were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And eventually he came back into humility. The Lord restored him, and he was never proud after that. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verse 20. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But there came one, uh, they came with one accord to him, and having made blast off the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon his third day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. You know, be careful when people give you grace or give you praise and glory. Pass it on to God. Be humble. And then we're told in verse 23, Immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. You know, in uh, your Christian life, as a wife, as a husband, as a Christian worker, as a church member, you need to be humble. The Lord is looking for humility. Deeper humility, more measurable in humility in our lives, in our attitudes, in our words, in our conversation, in our relationship and in, in relation and interpersonal relationship with one another. Walk humbly with thy Lord. If you walk humbly, there is promotion. If you walk with pride, there is punishment. Rise up and let us pray.